now we're going to learn about, we're going to learn all the secrets that Scotty's not going to tell us about how he does his show fish. And uh, here he is, Scott Myers. All right, well, thank you for having me here tonight. It's definitely an honor to be speaking here at the Ohio Cichlid Association. I've got to speak at a couple other local clubs, and it's always an honor wherever I go to be had. But, you know, this is one of the clubs where I started out as a little kid, you know, probably at about six years old. So it's definitely an honor to be able to speak to all of you tonight. So as Lou mentioned tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about showing fish. Uh, I've been showing fish now for about nine to ten years, you know, at larger competitions and about... 12 years at uh, smaller bowl show competitions, you know, at the local clubs. Uh, it's definitely my passion. You know, it's my favorite thing to do as part of the hobby right now. You know, some people like to set up display tanks. Some people like to breed fish. Some people like to do planted tanks. I like to show fish. So that presents a lot of challenges in its own right. Um, you know, you got to have a lot of tanks. You got to dedicate a lot of tank space to your show fish uh, to keep them pristine and keep them ready for the uh, fish show. That, that, you know, there's about seven or eight shows a year that uh, still go on. Um, some of them are a little bit further away. You know, maybe about 10 years ago, there were uh, a lot more shows. And hopefully we'll get trending back in that direction. But, you know, it's going to take everyone, you know, taking an interest in showing fish. Um, so a lot of people ask, what is a fish show? You know, I, I try and equate it to people who don't know anything about fish to a dog show. It's a competition where people take the you know, animals that they raised uh, to be judged and to be, you know, put up against other people's versus the breed standard to try and determine, you know, who's raised the best specimen. And, uh, you know, different classes can go up against different uh, fish. And ultimately, there's a grand champion or a best of show that's crowned and uh, reserve best of show. So I'd like to also start out with saying that there is really no right way to show fish. You know, it's something... Everybody does a little bit different. You know, everybody has varying levels of success with it, but there really is no right way. I'm just going to share with you tonight, you know, kind of what I do, what works for me, kind of what hasn't worked, and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So we'll get into it a little bit. Um, you know, the first thing, this is a typical fish show setup. There's a lot of uh, bare empty tanks where uh, people can go and they put their fish in and, um, you know, get to display them for everyone to see, but there's a lot of work that leads up to getting to this point, not only uh, from each individual hobbyist, but the clubs that have to put on these events, they do a lot of work to get this stuff set up so everybody can uh, participate. So what we'll do, you know, throughout the presentation, I've got individual fish that I picked out, and we'll go, uh, go through some photos of fish, and I'll kind of describe them, what makes them good, what makes them bad, and then we'll kind of just go through the whole process here. So the main thing is why people show fish. Well, me personally, you know, we did my personality uh, test at work. I came back. My number one personality trait was competitive, believe it or not. So I like to show fish for the competition of it. Um, my number two uh, character trait was empathy. And my number three character trait was inclus inclusiveness. This is out of about 40 character traits. So I want to beat you after I included you, and I don't want you to feel bad that I did it. All right. <laughs> so that's why I like to show fish. A lot of other people like to show fish so others can see your prize fish. It definitely promotes the hobby and can inspire others to try new species of fish that they may have only seen in books. Uh, some reasons why people don't like to show fish. They think it's too much work. I'm not going to lie. It is a lot of work, so you do have to be dedicated. If you're only showing a few fish, it's not as much work. You know, I think my maximum number of entries to a fish show has been 35. That was to the Ohio Cichlid Association Extravaganza last year in 2016, or actually 2015, so two years ago. And, you know, it was a lot of work. It was two truckloads worth of tanks and fish and everything that went with it. And another reason why a lot of people don't like to show their fish is they think they may lose their fish. But if you take the time and take good care of your fish, you know, there's a good, good possibility that it'll be a successful weekend for you, your fish, and everyone will get to see your fish. And it'll be a great opportunity just for you to interact with other people, maybe in a way that you haven't had a fish show before. Can everybody hear me okay in the back? All right, just want to double check. All right, so we'll get into it a little bit more. This is why I show fish. It's the competition portion of it. This is me. This is my father, Keith Myers. You guys have probably seen him. You know, he got me into uh, fish tanks when I was really young, like uh, six, seven years old. Actually, the first tank I had was a 38-gallon tank. 
and I uh, started actually breeding convicts in it. So then you needed a 10 gallon tank to raise the babies. And then I decided to go to an auction and then I put some filiborni with some convicts and actually it didn't work out too bad. <laughs> So then, you know, I got a 55-gallon tank, and any of you who know me know that I would go to auctions and leave with seven, eight boxes of fish at, you know, 10 years old, and guess what? They all went in the 55-gallon tank. But it was no problem. No, no, no worries, right? Only the strong survive. Well, you know, after a while of doing that, you know, it was fun, but, you know, obviously we wanted to try more fish, so we started getting more tanks, and next thing you knew, I had 9, 10, 11, 12, 20, 40 tanks, like a lot of you guys here. So. You know, we started, uh, my, me and my dad, we started going to a lot of shows, and my little brother, who, uh, you know, went with us a lot as well. And, uh, you know, we would just go and have fun. Well, you know, I got to go to a, a fish show, and that really sparked my interest in it. And uh, I decided I didn't want to breed fish anymore. I didn't want to try and set up display tanks. I wanted to try and show fish competitively. So that's how I got into showing fish. The first uh, show I can remember was the ACA in 2000 in Cleveland, Ohio. The Great Lakes Cichlid Society was my home club. It was 20 minutes from where I grew up. Uh, I started showing in the bowl show, and I got many tips and tricks from uh, somebody I consider a mentor, Ron Georgeome. A lot of you know Ron. Uh, you know, they've been here a while. Some of you don't. He was a uh, really good showman back in the uh, you know, 90s and 2000s. Uh, he won a lot of awards. Um, you know, the one thing I will say is the reason why some people start showing fish and stop is that it is competitive. And, you know, it, it is kind of a daunting challenge if you want to, uh, you know, win a fish show, a best of show award. Um, you know, it takes a lot of hard work. It took me about seven years to win my first one. Um, you know, I won my first one at the uh, 2012 Ohio Cichlid Association Extravaganza. That was with this fish right here. That was a photo of him in 2012. Uh, that's an Amphilophus hogaboomerum. Uh, he is still alive. He's actually living in Jonathan Straczynski's 1,200-gallon uh, tank as we speak with toast, so we're hoping that uh, he doesn't become toast food at some point. Uh, that would really upset me because that fish is a good eight years old now, but he's lived a full life and, you know, that's a good place for him to be because he gets to really display it. He's the king of the tank other than toast and all the other fish really respect him. Uh, what made him a really good show fish were uh, some of the things, you know, he had a lot of good size, color, finish, and deportment. Um, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later, exactly what all that means. But he was just a really clean fish. He didn't have any damage, any kind of scale damage. Uh, all his bars were nice and straight vertically. He had a nice large nuchal hump there. And he had really good color and really good personality. So that made him a really good show fish. This was my favorite Ryan George Jones show fish. This was a fish that he showed back in the early 2000s. It was a line of Cara Mallory. Obviously, as you can see, the color on this fish really pops. You know, that's the, that's the natural color of the fish with no natural enhancements or anything like that. You know, um, no photo filters or anything like that. You know, obviously if you walk into a fish show and you see that fish sitting there, that's gonna be the number one thing you're drawn to. So when I, uh, when I start selecting fish, that is the number one thing I look to. And there he is right there, Mr. Ron George O himself. So these are the accomplishments that I've been able to do. I've been able to go to a lot of fish shows. I've been able to do a lot of good things. Um, Here's my current tank list. We have a 300 gallon upstairs, a 120 gallon setup upstairs, a 72 gallon bow front. Downstairs in my basement, I've got a lot of 10 gallons, 20 highs, uh, you know, 20 gallon wides actually. 40 breeders is actually my favorite size tank. I've got 28 of those. And then uh, I use a lot of the uh, 40 breeders, 20 highs for a lot of the Malawi show fish. And then I use a lot of the uh, 40 breeders to start growing out the centrals. Then they move up to the 70 gallons, 75s, 90s. It just depends on what I have available. Um, you know, the 400 and the other 300 are a work in progress. Uh, right now we're pushing a total of 4,522 gallons. I just acquired another 575 gallons, so that'll allow me to grow up a few more large Central American showfish. So moving on, uh, like I said, we're going to talk about the process of showing fish, at least in my point of view. Uh, the process involves selecting the right fish, raising those, those fish, preparing them for the show, transporting them to the show, set up, judging, and tear down. This is, uh, this is my Nandopsis B9. That was a photo that uh, Mo, Mo Devlin, who you guys will see next month, he took that photo at the Louisville ACA in uh, Kentucky in 2014. That fish actually... Uh, took first in his class that year. Uh, you know, very nice fish, you know, a lot of nice finish on the fish, nice trailers, no nicks, no tears, nice red eye, you know, nice honeycomb pattern that attracted the judges. So those are the kind of things I start to look for. And again, we'll get to that even more as we go through. Uh, I am gonna stop right here though and tell you the one thing is 
all the this step is important, this step is important, this step is important, this step right here, this is what a lot of people miss, the transporting part. You can do the first three steps right, and if you miss this step, all your hard work goes down the drain really quick. If you nick up the fish, if it you know hurts itself, is it if it damages itself. So I, I'm gonna emphasize that throughout the entire talk, and I all want you to say, what's the most important part? All right, there you go. So selecting show fish, I look for many traits when I select show fish. Usually, and I kind of rank them, you know, how I select show fish. Usually outstanding color versus the breed, sta breed standard is the number one attention grabber in a show fish. I actually am going to stop right here and explain a little bit. When the show fish are judged, it's by, uh, you know, people who uh, are experts in their field for those fish. And uh, it is subjective, you know, no two fish shows are going to be alike. You could take the same, you know, 200 fish that were at one show, move it down the road 20 minutes, have a different set of judges and have a completely different outcome. So it is very subjective. So you kind of got to be okay with that because, uh, you know, something that did good one day might not do good the next day. So you kind of got to have a variety and that's what I aim to do. I have a little bit of everything so that that way I have a really good shot at uh, doing, you know, my ultimate goal, which is to take best in show. So after the color being the number one attention grabber, I look for the finer details. Finnage is usually next important. Any kind of fin flaws, and typically the fish will be uh, knocked out of the running for like a uh, first in class or best in show. Uh, deportment, that could be uh, next most important. You know, a fish that deports really well. Uh, what deportment is, is it's how the fish acts in the tank when you're uh, at the fish show. Is it hiding in the corner or is it at the front of the glass meeting you? You really want your fish to be at the front of the glass meeting you. You know, we'll go over some tips and tricks on how to uh, select for these traits further in the talk, but uh, that's, that's definitely one thing that, uh, you know, you want to pay attention to. Then, the, you know, over the years, you know, when I first started showing fish maybe, uh, like I said, 15, 20 years ago, size was really important uh, just because I think mainly, in my opinion, I think because the number of entries has dropped, I think size kind of gets overlooked as far as when the judges are pointing out fish. Uh, you know, just because there's not as many uh, people showing the fish, so there's not as much selection. And I think that anybody that was showing fish, you know, a while ago would kind of agree that, you know, then versus now size is kind of not as important. And then just lastly is overall condition. You know, every, every trait is important and every trait can lose you points, but I just kind of rank them to what I think is important. So, you know, this is a pair of Paracromus dovi that I'm spawning, but I just wanted to point out that this would not make a good show fish. Why would it not make a good show fish? It's got great color. It's starting to grow into its adult size, except it's got a big nick right there in the dorsal fin. So that would be approximately three to five points off out of the 20 for finnage, and that would, uh, you know, make it really hard to, you know, grow that fish into a show champion. This fish, on the other hand, is an Alonicara walteri, and the finnage on this fish is virtually perfect. Uh, you know, it's got very long flowing trailers, um, on for the dorsal fin and the anal fin. The pectoral fins are both matching. They're the same length. They've got the same length of trailers. You know, the fins are spread pretty much evenly from top to bottom. Um, you know, what we'll talk about while we're looking at this fish is a Monocara. I'll show you, I'll share with you some of the things I look for. Obviously, the coloration on this fish is nice. The finnage is nice. Uh, another couple things I look for. You know, a lot of people overlook the details, but you want every single dorsal ray from tip to tip to tip to tip to make a nice, even, swooping curve there. If you've got one dorsal ray that's sticking up too high or too low, it'll definitely show. If the fish has received any damage, you know, any nicks, and there's any space in between there, then the fish is going to lose points for that. Another uh, tip to look for when selecting Alonicara is even though when they're at home in breeding dress, they typically don't show too much barring, you want to take a look at the barring on the fish. The barring should be the same on both sides. The distance between the bars should be uniform. There should be no broken barring. These, the bars on this particular fish are really nice. Um, you know, it's uniform on both sides. You want to make sure that there's the same number of bars on both sides, because typically when you take your fish to a fish show, it's not going to be 100% comfortable. It's going to be a little upset, and it's going to be stressed out a little bit, so it's going to show a little bit more barring than it would at home. Uh, another thing I look for with my Alonicara peacocks, especially my Jacob Freiber guide types, is going to be the uh, color on the finnage. You want to make sure on the uh, caudal fin here on the back that, you know, if it's got white on the top, it's got white on the bottom. In a perfect fish, it would actually, uh, it would actually be 100% matching with how much you know coloration or white and just how much it comes around. 
But uh, this fish has a little bit of a floss, not as white on the bottom as it is on the top. So those are some of the things I look for as far as uh, my Alonicara peacocks. So we'll get into uh, how I go about raising my show fish. Uh, you know, it's really nothing special. Uh, a lot of people think I do a lot of fanatical stuff just to try and get my show fish to where they are. But, uh, you know, really, it's, it's really not much that's special about it. Um, you know, I'm doing bi-weekly water changes of about 50%. I feed a really mixed diet. Tetra cichlid sticks is pretty much my staple. New life spectrum for a lot of the uh, Africans. I get the Ken's veggies flake in there at least once a week. Frozen brine shrimp for the old world fish. Market shrimp for the... Uh, Central Americans, you know, about once a month. Um, so it's really not, you know, any kind of crazy diet. I know there's a lot of, you know, diets out there, color enhancers and all that kind of stuff. I've tried some, to do some of it. I've tried some chemicals. You know, there was a chemical out there called Boyd's Vitacam. I've tried that. You know, it really didn't make a difference in my opinion. There's, uh, you know, vitamin B12 is supposed to be really good for finnage from what I've heard. I've tried that. I've tried to feed it. I've tried to put it, dose the tank. I really haven't had any kind of different results with it. Um, you know, I've tried beta carotene. I've tried to feed it. You know, it'll, it'll get it a little bit redder, but, you know, not all fish you want to have super red. And really, I mean, if you select the right specimen to begin with, you're really not going to have to worry about color. You know, and that's the thing. You really just want to worry about condition and deportment. Those are really the main things that I try and work with my fish on. I use API stress coat as my water conditioner of choice. The only chemicals I actually really use are uh, Melifix and Pimifix to treat any injuries or ripped fins, along with increased water changes. Um, if I ever get ick, I stick to a really you know, simple plan of just um, heat and regular uh, canning pickling salt. You know, that's all I use for that. I've had really good success with that. Again, I've tried a lot of uh, chemicals, you know, Noxic and all that stuff, and I just really haven't had good results. And what I have the best results with is really the simple stuff. Um, most of my tanks I use hydro sponge filters with multiple sponges being used on tanks above 40 gallon breeder. Uh, some of the 75s and 125s do get like an AquaClear 500. Uh, AquaClear is my power filter of choice. It's the filter I like the most. The, the Marine Land Emperors aren't too bad, but just for, you know, pure keeping the water clean and, you know, and how, how I like it, I like to use the AquaClears. So this would be a Pseudotrophius type that uh, I would show. This is a Pseudotrophius blue dolphin. This is a fish I had for about six years. Actually just passed away this past year. That was kind of sad. But uh, I got another one growing out, so no worries there. Um, you know, again, it was really nice and large for the breed standard. This fish was about seven inches. Breed standard is about six inches for this. It had really nice finish, really nice color. Um, all the bars were very straight. You know, it had one little flaw right here, and it's really hard to see. See how that dorsal spine is sticking up just so ever slightly further than the other dorsal spines? And some judges will catch that. Other judges will not. It's really just something to look at. Um, you know, and really, that's something that I might take, you know, if I was judging, I might take a point off for that. Um, you know, out of 20, tw you'd get 20 points for finish. I might take a point, maybe two off for that kind of flaw. Um, some of the more uh, egregious flaws, like any kind of, giant splits in the finish like that, I, you know, be three to five points a piece, depending on the judge. Um, any deformities in the finish, you know, where some of the spines might have been nicked up and never grown back, you know, those would be three to five point offenses, you know, so really, you could lose quite a few points. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of fins on a fish. You can lose quite a few points just for that one aspect of it. Um, you know, some of the things I've learned over the years are if the spines are damaged, you know, that probably won't grow back. If just the uh, filament between the spines is damaged, that probably will grow back. It's just water changes, heat, and um, Melifix, salt, that, that pretty much does the trick. So we'll talk about uh, preparing my show fish. 90% uh, of the time, my show fish are kept alone at all times. Um, you know, they're really not used to other fish. Um, you know, I, I, when I acquire them, typically they go, you know, an appropriate size tank by themselves. If it's something that's really special or I, I happen to buy it as a pair, I may try and breed it. But especially once you get closer to show season, you really have to keep them separated. Um, you know, fish fight, they bicker. You know, even the smallest, as I've mentioned, smallest damage, one scale being knocked out of place, one fin being ripped, you know, if your ultimate goal is to win a best in show, those are the things you got to keep a look, at, look out for. You know, like I said, the only exceptions are the ones that have kind of retired or, you know, I choose to keep the line, you know, the breed going. Um, you know, my old world show fish are kept without gravel, usually in a 20-gallon 
uh, for some, uh, smaller ones, a 10 gallon. So that's like all my Lana Care peacocks, all my pseudotrophies. Obviously there's exceptions to that. You know, um, if you get a larger pseudotrophies, you might want to bump it up to like a 30 or 40 even, um, you know, so you can get that full max size on it. Um, you know, a lot of cares tend to do really well in 20 gallons. I actually, um, you know, have some 20 gallons, like I said, that are 20 gallon. There's basically two 10 gallons set next to each other. And that's actually where I keep all my peacocks. Uh, they seem to do really well with all that surface area and all that, you know, area to swim. Uh, allows them to display really well. 20 gallon high would be my next choice. And last choice would probably be a 20 gallon long. Um, just, you know, with the way I keep fish. A lot of the Tanganyikas, smaller ones, the Lupi, Lamps, stuff like that. They'll be fine in a 10 gallon, Crebensis, stuff like that. You know, they'll be fine in a 10 gallon. Um, my New World show fish are usually kept with gravel. And the reason I do that, you know, the New Worlds versus the Old Worlds, the Old Worlds, you know, they, they tend to be less uh, personable. And, you know, they, you can find some that are personable, but they really don't seem to get too bored. My New World's fish, if I, if I keep them in there with nothing other than the sponge filter, they'll tear the sponge filter apart. They'll, you know, beat the glass until they hurt themselves. So I really just put the gravel in there so that they can have something to uh, entertain themselves with. You know, they're kept, they're started, a lot of them are started out in a 40-gallon breeder, then moved up to a 75 or a 120 tall. Again, I like tanks that uh, are more square for a lot of my show fish, that 120 tall. That's kind of like the perfect tank. Um, you know, from there, a 180 would be the next choice up. Uh, I will tell you this, I do not use heaters in most of my show fish tanks. My room stays about 79 degrees, tank water between 74 and 75. The lower tanks is a little bit cooler, you know, 72, 73. Um, you know, I really don't do very much with uh, my water. I don't do much testing for pH and all that stuff. Fish will pretty much adapt, you know, um, except with the exception being like the epistogrammas, you know, they really do like it soft. So yeah, I can keep epistogramma males, you know, singly, but I'm not going to have any success spawning them. Um, and after a while, even the males start to lose their color at my house. So I don't really do too many epistogramma types or soft water species, but my water in Twinsburg, you know, is kind of perfect for the African cichlids and uh, the Central Americans don't mind it either. Um, you know, a couple of reasons for not you know, keeping my tanks warmer. And I know a lot of people come over and kind of comment on that when they come over. I don't have very much problems with it, you know, and I, I've been very, you know, lucky in that sense because I don't have very many issues. Typically, the only issues I have with it are when I introduce new fish from other people. Um, but my fish pretty much get used to it. It takes them longer to grow, I will say that. But really, I think a lot of the issue that we have in the hobby is a lot of people, and please don't take offense to this if this is what your goals are, a lot of people like to just BAP the fish. So they're trying to grow the fish up to breedable size as quickly as possible. They're trying to hurry up, spawn it, and they're trying to um, you know, offload the fry and move on to the next one. But what that does, in my opinion, is it kind of, you know, the fish don't grow out the same way they would otherwise. They, they don't grow as elongated, they grow taller, than you know, a fish that takes a while to grow. You know, a lot of my fish are three, four, five year projects by the time you guys see them at the fish show. You know, I, you know, some of the fish I acquire today, you might not see for three, four, five years because it's just gonna take me that long to grow it up because I'm on a slower plan than a lot of people. I could jack up the temperature, you know, feed them a lot, do a lot of water changes, and they'll grow really quick. The only issue with that is they're not gonna live as long either in my opinion, you know. So that's just some of the things, some of the reasons that I keep my heat low like that. Also, another thing you have to realize is at a fish show, typically there's not going to be heaters. Uh, you know, so my fish are used to that 74, 75 range. A lot of people will bring their fish right out of, you know, like their display tank or their breeding setup. It's 80 degrees, 78 degrees. They're taking to a fish show. It's at 73, 72 degrees even, some even 70 degrees. And the fish is basically in shock at that point. So really, that's another reason why I don't like to keep my um, tanks that warm. You know, I could go into a lot more depth and, um, you know, put a lot of heaters on my tanks, but I, I just got so many tanks that I can't, can't do that. And then I could, you know, jack up the temperature, grow the fish out really quick, and then, you know, lower it down before the show. But I don't really want to do that. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the method I have. So this is actually a fish. This photo is uh, taken circa like 2010. This is my Amphilophus feste. Uh, this was my wild caught male that was brought in by Dan Woodland. This was probably my favorite fish of all time. Uh, I had to bury this fish. It's in my backyard right now. 
Uh, this was my pet fish. This fish won uh, reserve best of show back that year at the Ohio Sickle Association Extravaganza. It was the first major award I had won. So it's a line of fish that uh, I like to work with. I've still got this line of fish. I've got these, uh, actually Eric Sorensen, wherever he is, he knows all about them. He's got this line of fish. So we keep this one going. It's a really good line of feste. So we'll talk a little bit about a couple weeks before the show. So what I like to do, you know, typically when you're going to a fish show, you, you can register all the way up until the date of. Some fish are, or some shows are a little bit different. You have to register, you know, two, three, four weeks beforehand. And typically what I found is it depends. It depends on is the show itself going to provide the tanks or are you going to have to provide your tanks? If you have to provide your tanks, then you can pretty much uh, register that day. If they're going to have to provide the tanks, which some shows do, they like to do it for uniformity and you know stuff like that, make it easier on people, then uh, you typically have to register at least a couple weeks in advance. Um, so you know, a couple weeks, about two weeks before the show, right before I have to register, um, if I do have to register early, I like to uh, use a flashlight to check, check the condition of fish. If they check out okay, then I will take them. If not, then they'll usually stay home if they have any fin rips or any damage or any you know, disease or anything like that, any bacterial infections or anything going on. Uh, about two weeks before, I like to increase the feeding during this week so they can withstand not eating during the show week. That's one thing that I do about three to four days before the fish show. I try and stop feeding my fish. That way the fish aren't fouling up their water that weekend of the fish show. Uh, so I'll feed them heavy two weeks before, and then that way by the time you get to the show, they won't be all sunk belly because you didn't feed them for three days and all that. If you really keep up with them, you know, it works out really well. Most shows set up Thursday or Friday. I do not fit, feed the fish in the week leading up to this. Um, you know, some shows are just weekend shows where you set up Saturday morning, tear down Sunday. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but most of the major shows, it's either Thursday or Friday um, for setup. I actually like to set up my fish the day before judging if possible. That's the best time to set up your fish. I have a lot of people ask me that. I know some shows you can set up two days before, even three days before. I personally don't like to do that because I don't take my own sponges with me a lot of times. Some people do like to take their own sponges, but when you set up that early in the week, by the time the judging comes, the tank is usually pretty cloudy. And then by the time Sunday comes to tear down the fish, the tank is really usually shot as far as water condition, and then you gotta take that fish home in that water condition. And it really just depends on the uh, fish and where you're at and how big of a tank it's in, but I like to set up the day before judging. That way they won't foul the water before the judging, but the fish has just enough time to settle in. This would be a cicada umbrifera that I'm growing out for show, just an example of a fish that I would look for. It's about an eight inch male. You know, he doesn't have any fin flaws. He's got some nice coloration. Um, you know, he's kind of personable. He was trying to hide behind a flower pot, but uh, that's because I was breeding him at the time, and then I'd take the flower pot out, take the female out, and continue to grow him for uh, show purposes. So, what did I say was the most important? Transporting show fish. No, moving, catching, and transporting fish is where 90% of the shows that I go to are won and lost, and I truly do mean that. I've seen so many nice fish at ACA conventions, at OCA extravaganzas, at the Akron show that are really nice fish and probably could win the show if the owner would just take a little bit of time to be very careful with the fish. It can definitely mean the difference between placing or not placing or being a first place in your class fish and a best of show fish. Um, as far as catching my fish and getting them ready to go, I use a bag much larger than the fish to catch it. I don't use any nets to catch any of my show fish. You fully submerge the bag into the fish's tank. Then you want to you open up the bag to full size, slowly corral the fish into the bag. At that point, you'll have a lot of water in the bag. You want to let some out. You want to be really careful when you're letting some of the water out the bag that the fish doesn't try and come shooting out the bag. So you kind of want to do it real easy, real slow. It takes me a really long time to bag my show fish. If I, basically, I can bag about a fish every eight to 10 minutes. So if I'm taking 30 fish, I got to start three hours ahead of time. Uh, larger fish obviously are a little bit harder than smaller fish. Um, so like I said, you then want to let some water out the bag, but keep enough in there to cover the fish. You remove the fish from the tank and place it into the correct transport container, which we're going to go into a little bit more depth on transport containers in the next slide. 
Um, you know, there's a couple different ways to do it. Like I said, you know, there's no right way to show fish, but I'm just going to share what I like to do. Some people leave the lights off while they're doing that, uh, while they're getting their fish, so the fish is at rest. I personally do not like to do this. The reason I don't like to do this is because, to me, you know, once you start getting in the tank, and because I have so many fish that I'm going to work with, you know, by the time I get three, four, five, six fish down, the ambient lighting of the room is going to alert the fish that I'm there. And they're going to be kind of be caught between the rest phase and the uh, active phase. And they can really dart, dart around, go crazy. So I just go ahead and go full bore, turn all my lights on. They all know I'm there. You know, really, fish, I, I know people don't think that fish have very long memories, but I know it's been proven, especially in goldfish, that they can not remember certain things. And really with my show fish, you know, I, I feel like they do remember the process, and that's why I do the process the same over and over and over. You know, so a new fish might not know the process, but four, five, six, seven fish or fish shows into it, that fish knows what's going on. I'm going to tell you what, that Amphilophus hogaboomerum that I had, he was in a 120 in my, in my dining room, and he would see, he was always the last fish I caught. And he would see me, and my dad always comes over the mornings of fish shows. My dad only usually comes over once every couple weeks, so, you know, the fish would get really excited because my dad's there. He knows my dad. He knows the sound of my dad's voice. He sees me. He can tell I'm bringing all these fish upstairs. He knows what's going on. So by the time I get to him, I set the bag in there. He swims right in every time. He's trained. He knows what's going on. It's no problem. Um, so they do remember it, and that's why I like to participate in these bowl shows. I know some, some people might like it if I brought a few less fish to the bowl shows, but this is really training for a lot of these fish, like the, especially these younger fish. This is where I train them to get ready and get used to this. Um, you know, so if you're going to the fish show, you know, you're going to follow this process to get your transport and your show fish, but it also really depends on how far you're going, you know, how long you're going to be at the show. You know, like a bowl show like tonight, I brought my fish in the tank, you know, that's another method to transport them. That's not my preferred method. That's just the easiest method for what we're doing here tonight at the bull show. I can take the fish home. I can put them right back in their tanks. You know, typically you won't damage them. There is a, a better preferred method, which I'll go over here in a little bit more. And if you have a fish, you know, I've had a, three or four or five fish in the last, you know, 10 years that are really just problem fish. They just freak out no matter what you do. So one thing you can do is drain 25 to 50% of the water in the tank, make it a little bit easier to follow that process of catching the fish. I'll tell you this much, watch for center braces, okay? That fish will try and come out, and inevitably, if it's got a center brace, that's where it's going to hit his head at. I've had multiple fish, you know, I'd say three fish over the last 10 years that, uh, you know, you learn that lesson, you know, they start flying back and forth. Next thing you know, they're into the center brace, and that fish's chances is ruined for the weekend, so you might as well leave them at home.